everybody, it's Sam Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these pumpkin little table favours or just a nice little gift box. You could add a handle onto the sides here and turn them into a little gift bag. So there's lots of ways to use it. It's very easy. I've just used some circle dies and just some simple scoring for this kind of case piece here. All of this I will talk you through. The paper I've used is the gorgeous, it's a really nice orange, it's mandarin orange and this is by Paper Mill. Just see it there, there we go, Paper Mill Direct. So I've used that one today. All the links and everything, as always, will be shared below. But mine are gonna be table favours and you can see there I've filled them with lots of sweets and I'm gonna probably pop a scratch card in there as well because we tend to do that within our family. We, um, yeah, we have a little scratch card. We do it on our like Christmas table favours and things like that. So yeah, I think it's really cute. I may well put a little name tag on it as well. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, very, very straightforward. So let me show you how to make them. Okay, so I used my tonic nesting oval dies. You would have seen these feature a lot. And I used the one, two, three, four, the fifth largest one. I'll give you the measurements for this one in case you, you know, you want to get it as close to my size. So it's three in diameter and three and three quarters in height. Yeah. Okay, so you'll want to die cut uh, six for every box. So I've got three there for the front and then I've got two here and I've got one more that I'm going to show you just how I quickly distress the edges. I just think it's nice to do that. You don't have to, but it does really kind of, I just, I think it just highlights the pieces and it just makes it look a bit more 3D because it gives that depth on the sides here and it makes it look a bit more like a pumpkin. So but really easy to do. So we'll do that in a moment. Then I've just got these little bits which I'm going to be cutting bits and pieces from. There is one of these, now this is actually the ivy leaf from John Next Door dies. This is the plate. You would again, you see me use this a lot and I did say it was going to get used a lot and it certainly does because although it's ivy, if you look at a pumpkin leaf, it's it's got that kind of very similar shape. It's much bigger, but do you know what? I think it works really, really well. So yeah, so I die cut, you get two on each and I use two per pumpkin. So I just run that a few, few, few times. That's how it looks and everything. But again, I'll share as much as I can. And then I've got the flower and I'll show you how to do all that. So again, I'm gonna distress one of those in a moment with some ink. I'm just gonna talk you through the, I guess the inner case part. So you want a piece that's three by seven and a half, okay? Along the three inch side, you want to score at half an inch and two and a half. And then along the seven and a half inch side, you want to score at two and a half and five. So you should have two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half. Three um, equal pieces there. Okay? With this piece here, you just want to fold and burnish all of those score lines. And then we're just going to do a little bit of cutting. So where you've got your two score lines here and here, you will also have this bit here. You just want to cut a triangle so that the top of the triangle hits the corner of this piece here. So take that one off there so you can hopefully now make out what I've done. Just make sure the top of the triangle is in line with those score lines there. Okay, so you need one of those for each little holder, carrier, box, whatever you want to call it, favour. Depending on how many you're going to make will depend, obviously you'll need to cut those accordingly. Okay, let's just do a quick little bit of inking. Okay, so I've just got my mat here which I've been basically inking everything with and I've used the Stampin' Up! Cajun Craze and I just pop it on my mat and then just pick up the ink that way. It's just much easier than popping your brush into this all the time. and don't want to go in too heavy so I kind of just you know make sure you get it evenly distributed on your brush and then just go in and you're just kissing the sides of the cardstock and I don't really go over it too much because every time I'm kind of brushing it's picking up a bit more ink each time from the mat. If you want it to be a bit more intense and you can go over it again but I did just go around mine once and that's it. Just it just again when it's like against itself, you can't really see it. When it's on its own, you can't really see it, but once I put it against something, you know, you can really notice it more. So that was that one. And then for the green, I've done exactly the same. And this one I used always artichokes. So there are some older stamping up ones there. And then again, just got some of the 
ivy there and just the same way pick a bit up on the brush and just just catch all of the edges of the leaves and there's the other one that I done it just makes them look more real I think they look quite authentic there okay so that's how you do that so now we want to pop it together the first one you have to kind of do yourself because you've got nothing to put it against but once you've done one I then use the first one I done as a template and I sat it, sat all the other ones over that so all of these are exactly the same if I put them against each other back to back they are all exactly the same because I used the first one as a template but because I've kept this one for video I'm going to have to do this one again but I'll show you kind of how you do it so because I do want to make sure they stay similar so I'm going to just kind of do like that so you have them like two of them like this and then the top one goes on top and then I pop glue on the back of this stuck it down and then just popped a little bit of glue on the back but I do just want to make sure mine are the same as this so I'm going to just sit them over like so and then I'm going to just add some glue on the back of this one and then I'm just going to sit that over the top and lining it up with that one underneath okay and then when you get your other three you would now use this as your template so ignore that I've done that okay this is your first one you've laid it all down then when you go to do all your others sit them on top of this first and that way you know that you're getting it exact each time so again just going to pop a bit of glue on the back of this one and then what you do is just go in behind the back because a bit of it won't be attached and just stick that down and then that's all secure oh that one's all been pushed together so let's just move that around don't think i put enough glue on that one and again i'm just going to go underneath that one there and that's how you do it so i'm just going to let them dry a second okay then grab your base and i'm just going to pop some glue on the center tab first of all so work from the middle out it's much easier so just like so and you just want to sit it over the back here turn it upside down and you just want to make sure that these score lines you can get them as close to the bottom as possible without it showing so if I just fold that over you can see how far down so this is all hidden within this section and if I go over this way here, you can see, you'd basically when you look at it that way, because we're going to fold these up, you don't want to be able to see any of this case. As you see it all gets hidden. Okay, so then grab one of the sides, again add some glue. If you haven't got liquid glue, you can use double sided tape. And then just bring it up, and this one you just want to bring it out just right up to the edge there. Again, you don't want to be able to see it from this side. If you want, you could come in and have it more square. So you could come right up like this and have a square little kind of box but I wanted to kind of fit as much as I can inside it so by you know having them fan out gives you a lot more space and I've done this in a lot of my gift bags deconstructed gift bags I do a lot like this and then this one here just pop it out so you can get all the glue on that tab there and again bring that one in and just bring it as far out as you can and you can see there how it all looks inside but now from the front you can't see anything then the back one it's up to you if you want to do one at a time I just popped glue on all of them okay so I did actually do the Tunnock's tea cake treats they were going to be my table favours however my sister wanted them so now I'm doing another one so I'm doing these you wait she's going to see these now and be like oh no I want those ones so it's tough she came and pinched my other ones with the Tunnock's tea cakes how dare she so this time it's sweets so just stick that all down and there you go you have your little pumpkin little holder I think it's so so cute now you could put a handle on this if you wanted to turn them into little gift bags I know lots of you that watch make a lot of these things for your grandchildren so I think they would be quite cute as a little bag as well if you wanted maybe someone's got a birthday party on Halloween how cute would these be as little party bags for people to take although I don't think that's done a lot is it I mean 
I'm old school, what happened to a good old party bag and a piece of cake? But that doesn't seem to be the case, but I think they'd look really cute. So maybe if you're still doing that, then that can be an idea. Now I just want to decorate the top. So we need to create the little piece here. And I just done it freehand. I'm just literally gonna show you how I cut it. So it measures its height, just so you can get a rough idea. It's one and a half high and it is one and a quarter wide, okay? So again, though, I'm not really taking too much notice of that. So just a rough, I've got a piece of scrap card here. I'm gonna come up like this. It's kind of like a coat hanger or like the top of a witch's hat. And then kind of come around you know, this kind of thing I can't really like teach because everyone's is going to be different. But the good thing is you don't want them to all look the same because it's a pumpkin. It's a piece of, you know, food. They all grow differently. But there, that's what you kind of want it to look like. So like I said, a bit of a witch's hat. Yeah. And now when that goes behind there, once I distress it a bit, I think it looks quite cool. So that's, that's it. That's all I've done. Then for the these curly bits, I have already done two, but I'll just show you with this piece of scrap here. You just wanna cut very, very thin amounts, or you can run this through your trimmer and just cut very, very thin amounts, because I know my Tim Holtz guillotine will cut very, very thin slithers, but I'm cutting probably about one eighth of an inch strips. I'll just do the one, because I've already done those. And then I just grabbed a pencil or a pen, anything, and just wrap it around the pencil, like so, really kind of squeeze it onto the pencil, then slide it off and you will have a little springy piece to pop on your pumpkin. That's it, really easy, no special tools needed. I'm gonna quickly just distress this one just so that it matches all of the others. Okay, and then again, I'm just gonna apply a thin, strip of glue and you may be able to just slide it in between the two here like so okay and then I'm just quickly going over and shaping my leaves this is just a foam that I made a little foam block that I made myself using the packaging from the Tim Holtz stamping platform so you can see now, just by kind of curling them, it just again makes them look a little bit more authentic. So just do this one here. Okay, that is all optional. You do not have to do any of this. They will still look great without. So, you know, if you are gonna make loads, then this might be quite a lot of work to do for, you know, a lot of them. This was five, this didn't take me long to do. And whenever I make, I guess more than one thing I do, like I've just said before, I do all of the scoring for the bits there all in one go. I cut and distress all of these and do it all in kind of chunks. And then when you come to put it together, it's actually really quick. So now I just need to add these. Now I think I did actually end up cutting them down a bit. So I'm just gonna remove, cause it was a bit too long. So I'm just gonna take off that bit there. Put a bit of glue on the back. And I'm gonna pop this one just behind here and just kind of pull them down. I do add a little bit of hot glue just behind, I think it was like that one there, for example, just so they stay in place. I'm just gonna hold that one there for a second. Okay, and then this one here. Again, just pop this behind the other one. Yeah, and this dies really good because you can pull them around and it just, I don't know, I just think they look really, really good. And then this one here, I actually popped in between the top here and the front of the pumpkin. So I just popped it just inside, like so. And I'm just gonna get some hot glue for the flower. I'm gonna pop that one just there. And then I'm gonna pop a bit of hot glue behind that one. Just have him there. And then these pieces here, just fit, you know, pop them anywhere you want really. Just a little bit of glue behind. I'm just gonna pop one just in there. And I think it's these bits that really finish it off. I just think they're such a nice little touch and it's so easy to do. And you can stretch them out a little bit. Okay, so those are my table favors for this Halloween. And I think they are so sweet. I really do like them. I'm wondering whether to add the name tag or not now because I could easily put these away, 
you know, and bring them out again next year. Although saying that, I'll probably make something else. So who knows? But uh, either way, I hope you've enjoyed them. I hope they've inspired you. I can also see these working as a Father Christmas face. So if you've done them in white cardstock, that would be, sorry, a snowman's face. That would be all white. And then you could do your snowman's um, eyes and everything. And then this bit would be the black hat and you could do some holly and the berries on the hat. I think that'd look really cute. So I might actually do something like that because I think that's very fun. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired you. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.